Welcome to Politics Done Right. I am your host, Egberto Williams. This is the progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. This is the program that will encourage you to make sure government becomes we the people. Whether you are liberal, conservative, or otherwise, you get to air your point of view. Remember, you can also send me a tweet to E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S, that is, at Egberto Willie. Let us engage. It is politics done right. One, two, three, four. Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Right. I'm Egberto Willis, your host. Thank you so kindly for being a part of the show. We are going to have a great show for you today. And you know why we are going to have a great show? Because we're doing exactly what we said we were going to do for the year 2019. And that is we were going to ensure that we make it known who are the people that are changing this country. We're going to make it known who are the people that are out there beating the pavement to make a difference. We are we are honored here to have somebody special in the... Uh, actually, he's right here in the studio in Kingwood, Texas. So, I mean, uh, it, you know, not every time, most of the times we bring people in remotely. Well, uh, he made the effort to drive out here. And for that, I am thankful. Who do we have here but El Señor Neil, and I'm going to say it right, Neil Aquino, a Houston activist and Senator Cornyn's. Republican of Texas, Nemesis. So, Neil, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me on, please. But before we get started, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, my friend? Well, I'm a, uh, a citizen of, uh, of Houston and of Texas and the United States, and I've been involved uh, in that capacity as a citizen in a, vo- in a variety of activist uh, efforts. Uh, the weekly John Cornyn office protest. Every, right. Every Tuesday, 1130 to 1 at 5300 Memorial Drive. And I've also been involved with uh, issues around our schools and opposing the school HISD takeover. I'm involved with our local Democratic uh, Socialist of America chapter, been involved with protests against the baby jail at Emancipation Avenue and also at the home of one of the guys who owns the property. And I've been involved with our uh, mainstream uh, Democratic Party as well in Harris and Fort Bend County to help a uh, Help elect that ticket last November. Me well, and a lot of other people, obviously. Well, you know what? Just from that introduction, you made it a lot easier for me to do the introduction for the show. And, you know, today's show, the title is Activism Works. Neil Aquino played a part in the blue in of Texas. Here is one person who made a difference. And uh, we are going to have a whole lot of other people who made a difference, not only here in Texas, but throughout the country, we've had a few thus far, and we're going to continue to expose a whole lot of these people because it is important for all Americans to note, for all Americans to see right up front that, no, they can make a difference. Now, I, I just want to remind Neil of one thing. The camera is this way. <laughs> so if you slide over a little to that side, oh, uh, or a little this side, and then bring this that, bring that, that, that mic that, up to your... That's a live television This right is there. live for live you. Live program. Very good. You said that's, that, that's the authenticity of activism. That's, the, it, act, that's the authenticity. Actually, I think if you can probably pull that mic down a little bit more and bring this out like that. All right. Yeah. Oh, how's that? that? That may be a little better if you Beautiful. could turn a little bit to this side. All right. There Good. There, like, there we go. Like, that, that's what we're like talking Arthur about. Arthur Godfrey's talent scouts in the 50s or something. Now you see he's uh, going to start talking about things that I'm, I have I'm not no that idea I'm not about. That, I'm not that old. You know, he's talking about things I have no idea. You have to remember, my friend, I was, I, I'm, I'm from south of the border. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But anyhow, today's title is Activism Works. Neil Aquino played a part in the Blue in the Texas. Now, this is the second time I've had Neil on. And one of the reasons that I wanted to bring him on again is, first of all, we Texas, you know, Harris County really turned over but the other reason is because uh like a whole lot of other folks that's been hitting the pavement day in and day out even after you can say the blues won or i want i prefer to say the progressive progressives won Mm -hmm. there are people who realize the same thing that it never stops no He's he's still out there and there's a whole lot of there are a whole lot of women mostly women and men out there that are it's continuing the pressure on these politicians, which I think is extremely important, and it is what they're doing. So 
I mean, I'm glad about that. Subtitle of the show, no one person or group is going to turn any part of America progressive. It is all about working together with an unabashedly progressive message that speaks to the people. Now, a lot of people sit down there and worry about where the, the state of the Democratic Party and all that sort of stuff. And why aren't the Democrats doing that and all of that? You know what I tell them, Neil, all of the times? Look, the Democratic Party will be the Democratic Party. Let mm -hmm. the Democratic Party do what the Democratic Party does. Mm -hmm. Let progressives who want to be activists and engage do what they must do. Well, we're... we're um you know, the work of freedom is up to us, and uh, my view is that we let, uh, we let politicians, in essence, into our spaces. We, we uh, uh, allow them to partner with us, and uh, I don't think we need, to, we need to be respectful, but we don't need to be overly deferential. Uh, we, are, we are in a rough place in terms of climate, in terms of our civil liberties, in terms of our economic prospects and our racial relationships, and if we don't take leadership, uh, no, no, one, no one's gonna. You're... you're you're making a mistake to wait for a politician of any party. Absolutely so. So anyhow, uh, one of the goals of Politics Done Right in 2019 is to feature many hardworking activists who are responsible for the progressive victories throughout the country. I am fortunate to be in the largest county in the country where the progressive activism and engagement made a huge difference. And that it did. It did. It did. We made a change very larger than... I think I think it's the largest shift in the entire country. I won't I won't quote it directly, but I know of no other turnaround of, of a county that I've of, that I've seen thus far. Thousands were activated, and it continues as we ramp up for 2020. One of the things we aim to show is if you can breathe, and if you are awake, you not only can make a difference, but you must make a difference. There's no two ways about it. Activists like my friend here, Neil Aquino, live by all the tenets in someone we call that that someone we call citizens live by. He engages and he makes things happen. We're lucky to have him in the studio with us today. So, welcome aboard, brother. Thank, welcome aboard. Thank you very much. There's no there's no higher title than that of citizen. There you go. None. There's nothing better. But before we get into the program, I, I, there's I was in common dreams, right? And I want to read a few four paragraphs that, that, that came out there because it had to do with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. said, after West Wing producer and screenwriter Aaron Sorkin mm -hmm. uh, text lectured mm -hmm. the bold freshman class of congressional Democrats to stop acting like young people in a CNN interview on Sunday, remarks that were quickly interpreted as a call to move right Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Democrat of New York, everybody knows who she is, responded that the progressive policies championed by young Democrats aren't mere trends with no real-world consequences. Who is going to tell him that most of the Democratic politicians firing up the base and driving the conversations are whom? Young people. Newsflash, Medicare for all and equal rights aren't trends. The New York Congressional uh, Congresswoman wrote, referring specifically to Sarkin's flippant dismissal of the push for equal rights for transgender Americans as a, a Republican talking point they are trying to distract you with. When people complain about low turnout in some demographics, it's not because communities are apathetic. It is because they don't see you fighting for them, Continue, uh, continued Ocasio-Cortez. The youngest woman ever elected to Congress. If we don't show up for the people, why should you feel entitled to their vote, mm -hmm. to which you say? Uh, I, I think that's a huge matter, and I, I have, um, I've been of the view um, in our 2016, and I'm not, I'm not interested in, in revisiting the primary or anything like that, but if, if we had activated our core voters in uh, Detroit, Flint, Milwaukee, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Cincinnati, Columbus, Philadelphia, we would have won those, we would have won those states. And what Ms. Ocasio-Cortez says is, is right. People are tired of um, being taken for granted and tired just of the assumption they'll show up and vote. We saw recently in Florida where the Democratic Party was too slow to activate uh, and seek Latino votes, and they just presumed that they'd vote for Mr. Gillum and Senator uh, Nelson, and that that didn't happen, and we, we really have to stop taking for granted the fact that folks are just going to show up for us. 
And one way that we can do that is support the leaders who come from those communities and, uh, and, and, and chart the path. And, and when I saw those comments from Mr. Sorkin, I was, I was just shaking my head. Now, it, it is amazing because you, you've just uh, said something that is so very important uh, right there. And, and, and here it goes. Um, whenever I watch folks on TV, whenever I watch what they're talking about, you can always see the analysis is coming from somebody in an ivory tower. Uh, whether Democrat or Republican, mm -hmm. the only difference is Republicans have a certain way of acting out with the amount of money that they have. But you just said you need to seek out the people in the community. I, th these think tanks don't do that. They, 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 they parachute into a community, and they think by parachuting into a community during election time because they have the big D around their name – that if they go into a Latino neighborhood, if they go into a black neighborhood, if they go into a, an Asian neighborhood or whatever, that the vote is cooked for them and they just need to say vote this way. And then the rest of the year, nobody hears from them. Mm -hmm. That is one of the things I have said. Uh, and, I, and for those of you who are, uh, I'm a member of the DSA, the Democratic uh, Socialist, um, uh, what does the A stand for again? De Democratic Socialists of America. Of America, sure. that's right. And 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 um and one of the reasons why is I see how they act. You know, my wife was over at her mother's house in uh, the southeast part of the, of the of the state. I mean, of, of the um city. And uh, it it is a predominantly minority neighborhood, uh, both Latino and Black. Very, you know, I think by now the proportions are probably almost equal. And uh, you know, during all these different elections, guess who she saw? She saw those red shirts, mm -hmm. the DSA members out there engaging for their voter uh, or engaging for their candidates, but in the process, bringing folks in that helped build this election that we have, th this huge victory that we had in Harris County. We, we did have a huge victory in Harris County. And, and, and speaking of parachuting in, I mean, the Democratic Party parachutes into these neighborhoods and... Um, in municipal and school board elections. How, how is it, how in the world do, do Democrats accept this 5, 10, 15% city turnout? And it's true in Houston, and then it's, it's true in cities all across the country, low turnout in municipal elections. You know, and here in Houston, and this may be true in whatever community you're listening, just subscribe to the, to the Facebook or Twitter feed of some of your council members and, and ask them, how many social events and sporting events can you attend when there's a stray dog in my neighborhood and, and that vacant lot hasn't been picked up in my neighborhood? And, and it's, it's something. Uh, the Democratic Party could, could do a long way towards securing its, its future and, and winning, winning the loyalty of folks because you can't assume people are going to be with you uh, just because. And the Democratic Party needs to be a far more active presence and if you think of our city council members, they have a staff of four. They're making sixty, seventy thousand a year. They've got benefits. If you call them about anything, they tell you to call three one one. I mean, what do they do all day? And they they could be out in the communities registering voters. And what I would encourage in here in Houston in twenty nineteen and wherever you are, if you have municipal elections in twenty nineteen, whether it be for school board or city council, act that ask that candidate. Where were you in 2018? Did you register voters? Did you use your campaign funds to, to help other 2018 candidates? Did you block walk? Did you organize phone book, phone banks? Or are you only here for yourself for election when we're sitting in 2018 worrying about climate change and pre-existing conditions and the conditions in our neighborhoods? I'm here with and Politics Done Right, and today my special guest is Neil Aquino, who is uh, one of uh, the activists here in Houston that I call him uh, Senator Cornyn's nemesis because he, along with a whole lot of very dedicated folks, are out there on the streets all of the times, every Tuesday. Every Tuesday. Every Tuesday, giving Senator Cornyn's office hell. In other words, they know what uh, we want. It is called engagement. It's called community, not only community engagement, but engagement for something that they want to get done. Now, um, I, I, I want to I want to qualify something because um, right right now Neil had quite a bit of uh, of information to talk of, or, or you know critique, I guess, for the Democratic Party, and many I've been getting some pushback uh, 
on some of the things that I've written, Neil, and and they accuse me of. Uh, do you want to lose in 2020? That is the worst thing that can happen. We constantly do this. We win a few elections, and after that, Democrats start all the infighting. Mm-hmm. I see. I don't even consider what I'm doing, what you're doing, infighting. What I consider that we are doing is we are early in this n- next cycle. The next cycle is 2020. Of course, there are going to be some minor elections this year, but the main cycle is 2020. What we have to do is put the uh, if uh, let me let me speak categorically as for myself. I don't know what you're gonna say. I am a progressive. I probably don't either. Right, <laughs> <laughs> but I am a progressive. That's my aim. That's my goal to get progressive policies that help people pass. Period. Whatever party allows me to do that is the party I associate with. Currently, the party most angled to do that is the Democratic Party, sure. and that is why I am a Democrat. Mm-hmm. But I am a Democrat, a progressive person first. Why am I saying that? If the Democratic Party is going to be the conduit for which we get progressive policies, then it is incumbent upon those who are progressives to ensure that those who continue to stride the fence in the Democratic Party either get on board with the policies or, as we normally do as Ocasio-Cortez, our young, and I call her a young leader because I've said, you know, I am at this point in my life, I want young people to lead me. They're the ones that we're leaving all the mess to. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be there supporting the millennials. Mm -hmm. I am going to be there supporting the Gen Zs. I am going to be there working for them because they are the ones that we're leaving this mess to. Mm -hmm. But go ahead. Right. Well, we can we can criticize the Democratic Party. We can acknowledge that there's a substantial difference between the parties, a moral difference between the parties, and still at the same time say that both part that neither party is adequate to the challenges of the day. You don't you don't get this white authoritarian president and a chronically low turnout in our cities and 10 years away from an ecological disaster without a systemic two party failure. Um, and that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that I voted all the way uh, Democratic. And let me let me say this: as I criticized the party, I I did a lot of volunteering and also some paid work for the mainstream Democratic Party in Harris and Fort Bend County. I I promise you, no one rejected no one rejected my efforts. And <laughs> and what I think it's incumbent upon all of us because I keep hearing I don't I I I, I want to put aside the individual of Bernie Sanders. I want to reference just sort of the movement he represents. I'm not referencing a desire for Bernie to run in 2020, but Sanders supporters showed up time and time and time again in 2018, and they are not reflected on the campaign staffs of candidates. They're not reflected on the office staff of the Democratic parties across the country. They're not reflected in the offices of the Democratic elected officials, and so often still to this day, you're told you're not a Democrat, blah, 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 and yet you take our efforts, and we're a substantial portion of the party. And one thing, if the Democratic Party wanted to stop infighting, is that it could evaluate their own staffs, their own hires, and they could reach out to people who maybe represent some ideological diversity in addition to the very important full diversity that's needed uh, in hiring. Um, that is so important, and I'm glad that you brought up Bernie Sanders. I wrote a piece uh, a couple a week or two ago that I said, you know, I'm a Berniac. I was a delegate for Bernie in Philadelphia, and I said that uh, one of the things is that I'm not sure that I wanted Bernie to win. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not win to run mm-hmm. uh, this time around. That said, I said I hadn't made up my mind if he decided to run whether I would be, uh, you know, whether I would immediately jump on his bandwagon uh, again. But th- the idea is this. Um, I, am a, I am in full support of all of Bernie's policies, mm-hmm. like most, and here, this is going to blow some people's minds. Most Americans are as well. Mm-hmm. And you know how I found that out? I was at a Netroots, and Elizabeth Warren went through a detailed list of progressive policies and values and your vote, the votes that they got. 
And not only that, but she did it in reference to how uh, with with um, Bernie Sanders. And it turns out these are the policies Americans want. And it's not only Democratic Americans. It is also Republican Americans that want that. I live in good old Red Kingwood. And I sat down with a woman and I spoke health care with her. And I described health care, uh, Medicare for all without using it by name. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. And I described how things would work in Medicare for all. And she looks at me and she says, oh, I would love that. Yeah, that would work great. That would work. Why, why aren't we doing that? This is what a Republican woman said to me. Mm -hmm. And I started to feel a bit guilty because I knew that she thought just maybe because of where I was, that I was that she was speaking to maybe one of her cohort, another Republican. Sure. And I said, ma'am, I just think I need to tell you this. I am a left wing right. progressive Democrat. And she said, her eyes opened big. She got red and she said, but you're so nice. Sure, sure, sure. When you hear me talk about two things. One, that we have to start uniting the ghettos, the barrios, and Appalachia. Yes, I know it's stereotypical, but you get the point. It is because if we fundamentally get to people before we get to ideology, it turns out that most people, and, and for many of you that are listening now, I've heard me say this before, but there are a lot of new people coming in, I've noticed them. There are, a, when we talk about these issues in that, in that manner, the way we talk about it, it makes a difference. You know, I started the show today and I didn't even say happy birthday, Martin Luther King. It's Martin Luther King's birthday. So uh, forgive me all those that are, that are on. I forgot to say that. But here's a kicker. Uh, today's message, today's blog of the week was supposed to be, uh, I, I forgot the name that I gave it, but in effect, it was an apology on my part because uh, I wasn't, if, for a long time, for all those who know me, I was not the Martin Luther King fan. Mm -hmm. I was actually the, um, the fan of a more revolutionary style because I have never thought that, you know, that peace brought quite a, I, I've never thought, uh, it's not about peace, I've never thought that anytime somebody gives you something, they feel they have the right to take it away from you, the way somehow Trump believes he has the right to take things from you. However, however, I listened today on Amy Goodman, mm -hmm. her program, and she played some passages of Martin Luther King as I was on the, uh, I'm on the treadmill, uh, Neil. Mm -hmm. I'm on the treadmill. Aren't, aren't we all? Very metaphorical. Right. But this, I was really on the treadmill. Right, right. And, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm on the treadmill, and I'm listening to MLK's speech in London. And I was like, wow. You know, it immediately, one, one of the things I always talk about, right, is, Many people are scared to say they're wrong, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think we need to get over that, you know? Well, if, if you'll, um, we, do, we do need to get over that. Yeah, I do think that's actually been an area of personal growth for me in, in 2019. Right. But if you'll, if you'll give me a moment on Martin Luther King, um, I've, I've long been a fan of Martin Luther King. Mm -hmm. uh, my future wife and I drove from Cincinnati, where we lived at the time, to Atlanta uh, 20 years ago. And went to the Auburn Avenue District and uh, King's Home, mm -hmm. which is a national park site, is uh, just something. Um, for Martin Luther King, for his sermons, the best collection of his sermons is called A Knock at Midnight. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can order that. It's called A Knock at Midnight. The best uh, a book collection of his sermons is called Strength to Love. The best biography of King is a three-volume biography by a man named Taylor Branch that begins, um, the first book is Parting the Waters. There's three total. Mm -hmm. There's a theologian named James Cone, who recently passed, who did uh, Martin, in a, Martin and Malcolm's America, uh, A Dream or a Nightmare. Uh, and there are many, many um, great resources of Martin Luther King and I was always taken by his uh, radicalism. Um, the, we've 
we've we'd reduced his message to I have a dream and like a Coca-Cola commercial. And but it, it was something much else. Let me tell you something. Not being originally, you know, not being engulfed in the entire uh, MLK culture in the States. Again, I came here in 1979. Everybody around the world knows who MLK is. Mm -hmm. But nobody, you know, for, it, it, when, when you're from somewhere else, you don't really study all the speeches and right. and all, all, all the things, you know. So um, when it came to somebody like uh, Malcolm X who said, if you hit me, I'm going to hit you back. Back, mm -hmm. That was much more appealing to somebody like myself uh, in in the early days that said, you know what, uh, we've noticed, it, and uh, you know, I, I, the, the blog that I started writing said that uh, I called myself ignorant in the blog mm -hmm. that I that I mm -hmm. that I'm writing right now about the about not about coming to a conclusion with not having enough information or not having listened to some of these sermons and the message, and a lot of that, first of all, it is my fault, right? Mm -hmm. But but a lot of it is something that you just said. They, glor they, they, they try to put on Martin Luther King just this nice, innocent pacifist mm -mm. who would, 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 would comes over as a, to, to some extent, somewhat neutered, yes. in my opinion. Sure, yes. Okay? And I, am, I don't believe in neutering humanity, neutering folks that are being aggrieved. So that didn't sit very, that hasn't sit very well with me. So in my, my thing is like, well, look, look at what Trump is doing. They, gave, they thought they gave these folks, they thought they gave us uh, liberation so they can take it away. And whose fault is that? It's a bit deeper. So, I mean, um, so I, I, I thought that was very important, that, that sermon that he did in London that I listened to. I mean, it was powerful i stayed a few minutes longer on the treadmill because i didn't want to get off the treadmill because i would have moved lose the position and all that sort of thing. i would i would urge everyone you can order it it's a six cd maybe i'm i don't know if you can stream it or, or not i'm back in my mm -hmm. 80s 90s world but a knock at midnight is a box set of six cds um they are in my car um i've listened to them over and over all they are life-changing and a nice portable book that would fit in your purse or, or fit on your person, uh, a strength to love, a collection of sermons. If you don't want to get into the full-length biographies, just the force of the words there, um, they, are, they are very radical, ne necessary, to use a kind of cliche we use, we say necessary, but... You get the idea, and uh, I am going to. I, w when we're done, I'm going to put those in the show, um, in in the blog for the show, because I'm going to have to get it myself. Yeah. Uh, because, like I said, today was a turning point for me at the gym. Yeah, and I was at the parade um, downtown uh, this morning, mm -hmm. uh, and they had they had a hell of a crowd uh, downtown, and I was glad to see uh, at the parade there were. Um, um, beyond the the great school bands and you know the expected political you know figures, there were uh, 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 groups against the death penalty. There were uh, ACLU groups. There were a variety of uh, civil rights and uh, causes and and persons there. And there were groups that did represent uh, a Dr. King. And there was a there was just a great crowd downtown for the parade this morning. That is great to hear. I. I had contractors. I flood that that storm flooded my house. Uh, it's, it's, I, I, I don't even know which which storm, but uh, no, the last storm that we had uh, on Saturday, I think. Oh, okay. It was, yeah, or Friday night, or uh, well, that would be Saturday. But anyhow, folks, look, um, it is it is. Uh, I am going to write a blog about MLK. Uh, I'm, I've started writing it. It was supposed to be the blog of the week, but I couldn't get to it because I wanted to get get it in the right in the right context as far as. Always had 100% respect for um, for Martin Luther King. I, I uh, you know, I, I'm still a little iffy on the uh, this one, this turn, the other cheek. But I've, after I, I, after I simply listened to his sermon and the power of uh, a lot of the words in, in there, I had to say, wow, was I wrong? And I, and I, and I, I'm sorry, I just I can't remember the author. He passed right after it. It was published, but four or five years ago, there was a Pulitzer Prize new winning. Uh, biography of Malcolm, mm -hmm. uh, a professor out of New York City. I wish, I'm sorry, I can't recall, but it's it's a it's within the last four or five years it won a Pulitzer Prize or a National Book Award, and it is a great compliment and and further uh, adding mm -hmm. to to the Alex Haley Malcolm X right um, original, uh, and it really it really draws him out further. 
there, there's a lot of literature still being written out there, and it, it really is just, it ought to be just basic American History 101. Well, it is American history. I mean, yeah. it, as sadly, folks don't get it as they should, but right. it is American history that should be taught. Yeah. But, you know, again, like I said, a, a, lot of, a lot of things folks want, you know, like I said, in effect, what we get is a neutered version of, uh, of um, Martin Luther King. I had a dream, and, you know, let, let's, you know, turn the other cheek and that sort of thing. And for those of us, and, you know, if, 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 if I were more knowledgeable on all the guy's work, you know, if I had taken the time to be more knowledgeable on all his work, then, you know, again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have accepted the, you know, what we see as, oh, the pacifist. And he was opposed by his own establishment. I know. He, he was opposed by the own, uh, his own Southern pastor establishment. Uh, well, oh, why won't you get on board? Why won't you accommodate? Even even in the earlier era, say before he started talking about Vietnam and getting into the more uh, economic issues, even in that earlier phase, um, he was uncompromising and uh, certainly not not what they told him. Oh, step like we were talking about Ocasio Cortez, mm -hmm. you know, because he died at age. 39. I want to talk about her after this, but go ahead. They they just said, step back. You're too young. Who are you? Right. Same old stuff. You know, it's so hard to believe. You know, um, at, at at 39 he was killed, right. but it's so hard to believe or assassinated. It's so hard to believe that there was so much depth at such an early age. Mm -hmm. There was so much depth. At such an early age, that is so hard to, uh, yeah, to, to I've, fathom. Yeah, I've had the same thought. And also, you know, uh, Fred Shuttlesworth and, uh, and Rustin and the whole, the whole crew around him right. was solid. You know, you, it's really just a, in, in essence, a, it was a new generation of founding fathers. Right. And now, um, and now hope, may, maybe with Ocasio-Cortez and that Congresswoman Miss Presley from Boston, mm -hmm. And and maybe we're now we're seeing a new generation of uh, founding mothers, because it's certainly been these the these younger women uh, from cities, right? I'll add Boston, Detroit, Minneapolis, Queens, New York, right? Who, who are leading the way? What I love to see is that they are unabashed in the way that they say things. Mm. In other words, they are not playing by anybody's playbook and i think that except is what the people's except what well, exactly I, I should say that and that is what we that is what we need now i mean we need and you know i, I have a lot of friends that would say uh well, well i have a good friend that said something that i i wanted to reply to in the um in the in the facebook thread but i didn't want the facebook thread to take a direction that i mm. that that would that would have been too you know right. uh, if i made that comment in that in that um in that facebook thread a lot of folks would have gotten, what's the word that I want to say? They may have taken it out right. of context if it's not verbal. Yeah. So here's the deal. One of the things that um, my friend said was, uh, why can't Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, a Latina, uh, sort of act like our most, uh, our most powerful, elect, powerful elected person, woman, here in Harris County, which is Lina Hidalgo. Mm -hmm. And my, I, what I wanted to put as a reply to that and, uh, is, is the following. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez went out and won that race where she should not have won, where she had no help from a party mm -hmm. or anything other than a grassroots movement to help. Mm -hmm. Um uh, Lina Hidalgo is very competent. Mm -hmm. Lina Hidalgo is knowledgeable. Lina Hidalgo is all of that. Yes. But for the amount of Democrats who really love Ed Emmett, for the amount, the only way Lina wins is not that Lina is capable of doing that job, competent for that job, mm -hmm. was that the work that all the activists did they brought such an overwhelming support of straight ticket voting that it did the magic it did the magic and it was very disappointing to see democrats uh, some democrats or, or just the the argument that came up that it was straight ticket voting was somehow illegitimate folks it is legitimate right folks knew exactly they they didn't want some racist toxic party stripping away their pre-existing conditions they were they were fully cognizant and conscious as they went to the yes voting booth and they got rid of them all yes right so 
it get rid of them the, the the thing about what i guess my thing though what i what the the, the issue that i think was is, is important that i'm trying to make here uh-huh. is that the activists preaching progressive values brought a new set of people into the fold yes and that is what brought all these democrats in and i i would hope as miss lena and all the uh, um take their office i i hope i hope they realize that they if if they pursue progressive policies the people have their back that is my point and you hit it on the money neil my point is this for my friends who are telling who are making who are making the statements that says ah we got some calls that are going to come in in a minute for my friends who say i'm coming to you guys right away for my friends who say why can't ocasio cortez be like lena i would say First of all, let Lina be Lina mm-hmm. and let Ocasio Cortez be Ocasio Cortez. Let me go ahead and get the first caller. Caller coming in from 212. You are hot. Come on in. Hello? Yes, you're on. Is my mic working? Yes, your mic is working. Uh, nigger, 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 nigger. Uh, black people. Oh, keep black telling me, my man, friend. Metal. Go ahead. Yeah, tell them. How you doing? Can we tell him? Yeah, go ahead. I'm doing great. Yeah. Is that all you wanted to do? To uh, describe my hue? Uh, no. What Uh, else would you like to add? Do you want to add something um, other to the conversation? Yeah, I had a question. Yeah, black people are not human. Oh, they're not. They are subhuman. Okay. No, they're like crossbred with monkeys. Really? By white people. They. Yeah. Man, I you know what I you know what I love you know what I love. What's your name, sir? Mine. Yeah. Well, yeah. Don't what, worry about it. What? Oh, okay. Yeah. The, the only reason I'm asking you that is, what is it? What is it in you that made you feel that you just wanted to come on a show and call me a word because of my hue? I'm. You know what is it within your mindset that makes it that makes it necessary for you to. Do something like that. I'm just curious. Oh, God told me. God told you? Ah, okay. Oh, uh, no, uh, yeah. By the way, I'm God. You're God. I'm the re. I like, yeah. You know, let me tell you why. I, you know, I don't. People normally you call into a show and you do something like that. People get all tensed up and they get worried and they hang up on you and all that kind well, of I mean, stuff. But you know what I do? Up right now. I, but I don't I, do that. I, I see you shaking in your boots. Really? <laughs> Wow! So, yes. so, <laughs> we're, we're taking we're taking you exceptionally seriously. Yes. Oh, I mean, if, if you if that's what you're seeing, actually, we thought we think you're amusing. <laughs> but let me tell you, uh, my friend, thank you so kindly for calling. Well, you think it's true. Huh? okay, whatever. You think it's true? If you think so, that's fine. But look, I tell you what, my friend, I tell you what. One of the reasons I held yeah, you ahead. on a bit longer is because I want to show America. That this still exists. The best country in the world. It is, yes, absolutely. Yeah. What else do you want to say? I'm giving yeah. you. I've, you got another. No, thir- it is. What else do you want to really say? It really is. Yes. Okay. Anything? Like, if it's not America, it's probably a third world country. Okay, that's what you like, think. Every other country but America is a third world country. Yeah, my friend, I have another call I need to get to, but I thank you so kindly yeah. for and calling you're gonna because love the next guy. Oh, really? I bet you're gonna love. I'm, yeah, I can't. I can't wait. You have a wonderful day, my friend. All right. Okay. You too. Bye bye. <laughs> okay. Line eight two seven. Come on in. You're hot. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, I just wanted to say, um, black people are like they're like monkeys. Uh huh. Like related to monkeys. Yes. Yeah, um, that's why they have, like, the one of the lowest IQs. You actually know that in uh, Africa, mm-hmm. some people have lower IQs than, like, monkeys. Really? Like, gorilla. <laughs> like, like, Coco the gorilla. You know Coco the gorilla? All right, l- l- let me just tell you one thing, though. You know, it's because since you brought up the IQ issue, I would suggest that if you want a good book to read, to read the bell curve the bell curve will tell you everything that you need to know of how not to do research <laughs> but you should try I don't, it <laughs> i don't read fake books made by jewish people i don't oh. read fake books made by jewish people oh okay okay well look my friend thank you so yeah. kindly i tell you what i got another call i hope it's i hope it's a sensible call this okay, time well, but okay. ooh, thank ooh, you ah, brother ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ah. <laughs> 
Okay, let's see if this is a sensible one. 980, you're hot. Hi, uh, this is Pranav uh, from Indivisible Houston. How you doing, Pranav? Oh, hello. Talk to me. Yes. Hi, I just want to say hi to you and Neil uh, after those two uh, insipid morons uh, <laughs> that, you know, uh, I just uh, uh, I just wanted to do a quick shout out. <clears throat> Neil Aquino has been uh, doing amazing work here in Houston. And uh, Neil, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, mm -hmm. January, do, 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 or Hold on. January 22nd yes. is week 102. Week 102. Outside of yep. uh, week 102 outside of Senator Cornyn's office. Yeah, I, I, yeah. People, I'm sorry. I just, uh, yeah, I, Neil, I don't know if you guys have already talked about that. but We we did, but it I, uh, we're, I'm for endless plugs. Week 102, I think we're, I think we're catching up on Hello, Dolly for, uh, <laughs> for our uh, Hello, Dolly, and then Cats for our, for our stage run. But look, hey, but I tell, I, I tell you what, um, I, Pranav, I think I saw a few things in the feed. Is there any other things that uh, Indivisible are doing this week that we want to talk, that you want to tell folks that they're doing here in, in the Houston area? Indiv Indivisible is champions of freedom. Absolutely. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. And you're, you are, sir. But uh, so real quick, Indivisible, what we're, we're trying to do right now is that there are, you know, 800,000 government workers uh, that aren't getting paychecks. Uh, there's a government shutdown going on, on over, you know, basically what I call I call it, it it's tantamount to what happened with Brexit, mm -hmm. where political actors lied to gain power. And that's what we, we saw with the current administration who said, we're going to build a wall. And, you know, they kept saying, oh, it'll be 10 feet, 20 feet, 30 feet, 40 feet, 90 feet high. All nonsense. And then Mexico will pay for it. He there, this, this whole wall concept was sold as a, it was a lie, and now there's a person's ego is keeping our government shut down, right? And keeping 800,000 people from getting paychecks, which translates to millions of people. There are families out there that are pinching pennies, that are selling, you know, their clothes and their stuff in their houses because because of a lie. And frankly, a racist lie. And the, we need to call our representatives. There was a 100 to zero vote. Uh, a continuing resolution was passed in the United States Senate. Right now, uh, if other, I'm sure your, your viewers have seen, Mitch McConnell is hiding, and he says, "I can like I don't know if he said I cannot or will not bring any legislation up." Uh, to a vote that President Trump does not agree on. Um, he is, as Senate Majority Leader, he is effectively destroying the Constitution. The Congress is a co-equal body of government. Uh, the government does not run on the fiat of the executive. Uh, so I just, we need to call a representative, call our senators. We're, we're, uh, Neil and I are here in Texas. We're going to be calling Senator Cornyn and Senator Cruz and telling them to pressure Senator uh, Majority Leader Mitch McConnell to take the vote, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be calling uh, my Congressman Dan Dan Crenshaw, who uh, rather than being reasonable as he posits himself, is uh, is an ideological extremist himself. It's funny, you and I live so far apart, and we have the, the same, same congressman. congressman. Right, that is how gerrymandered right. we are. Yeah. <laughs> and so does Cyprus. Cyprus, Cyprus has him too. You know, it it it, it looks like modern art. When you look <laughs> at our yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> all these shades. That's uh, like a Calder or a Lichtenstein a call, or something. There's a big call to action on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Everyone, call your representatives, call your senators, uh, tell them you're, we're putting people's livelihood. There are government workers that are rationing insulin because they can't afford it. There are people that are that their cancer treatments are linked to government hospitals, and they're not they're not getting their treatments because of this. And I and there are countless other people, uh, contractors. There's businesses that, you know, uh, depend on government workers for their daily income. There's, you know, restaurants and what it's nine million things. They're re they're restructuring. They're recalculating growth projections for Q1 and Q2. It's dropping uh, by point one percent per week. 
yeah, it's we're this we're we're this is the most the it's the most ridiculous self inflicted wound possible. Um, for someone who's uh, for a president who claims to be cool, to, you know the people like you know whatever the people whatever his nonsense rhetoric. Uh, he is doing a lot of harm, and so please call your representatives, call your senators, and uh, tell them pass a continuing resolution, open the government back up, at least so they can so families out there can get the last two weeks. This Friday will be their second mid's paycheck. At least they can get those payment like they can you know pay their rent pay their bills pay their medical bills pay for insulin pay for their kids you know daycare everything there's a lot on the line and i think i I think the seriousness of it hasn't been addressed pranav uh, enough you're absolutely right pranav is one of the leaders in uh indivisible houston we actually had pranav on i think last week or the week before uh on all the great work that's been done like i said we are going to be featuring a whole lot of activists from around the country uh, that really made this blue wave happen and we have quite a big stack of them to uh, to thank and for everyone that's in here or on or coming through us via video feed there are hundreds if not thousands that really went out there and beat the pavement pranav anything else you want to say real quickly for and if i want to thank you for what you you know for you know we we stay on on our messaging system and i I'm just in awe of what these young people are doing, um, you know, and like I said, I'm here to serve and, and because we are going to be leaving to them the mess that many of, in our generation have left you. Pranav, anything else you want to say real quickly? Uh, just, you know, uh, have, uh, I just want to say Neil's awesome. Uh, he's, he's been a warrior uh, fighting for the people of Texas, uh, reaching out. You know, keeping our uh, government officials uh, informed and in check. And I encourage you to do the same in whatever state you're in. Go to your senator's office. Go to your representative's office. Talk to them. We're a representative democracy. We're not representing you. So tell them that. Thank you so kindly, Thank Pranav. Thank you. Very kind. Thank you. Right back at you. Absolutely so. Thank you so kindly, Pranav. Uh, you have a good one. Okay, my brother? Very good. You too. Take care. Take care now. Hey, folks, come on in. Telephone number 646-716-5812. Again, that number is 646-716-5812. Now, we're talking about Ocasio-Cortez, and I told you the little story about what occurred, uh, that, you know, that, that feed that I followed in the thing, and, and uh, w- w- what I really wanted to say, and I'm speaking to all these folks with respect, because everybody have these different ideas as far as Ocasio-Cortez is becoming the face of the Democratic Party, and, you know, maybe she's over too much to the left. The country, the country in their values are over to the left. I mean, we're not talking social, you know, I much, I, I don't discuss a whole lot of social things like, uh, let's say, abortion and, you know, that's not sure. my, I mean, there are other people who that's their domain, right? right? Yeah. You have to pick the niche that you're in. Yeah. I'm in the economic justice niche. Uh, it, that my, the ma- the majority of my of my writing everything is in the economic justice domain. Yes, I, I other everybody's going to have their other domain that they work in. Of course, by my hue, I'm also in the racial uh, racial racial justice domain. Mm-hmm. But you know, I, I I keep strongly on the economic justice because there's one thing that I always say. You know, uh, these these two callers that called in to mock me, okay. It's over. But as far as my financial situation, your financial situation, that is long going. And that is those are some of the things that I try to tell people. People say, oh, well, the, the racial things can be long going as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but there are certain things that are that are inten- there are certain things that you have to. How should I put it in a lot of ways that you have to handle? I can't I can't go ahead and not pay a bill and say I was hurt because somebody called me a name. Right. Right. Well, I, I, there are everyone, everyone does have their approach. I, and I, um, that's one of the things I've most uh, liked about Houston's activist scene mm-hmm. is that every, everyone's got their horses for their courses. There you so go. I used to go to the track with my dad. So <laughs> some, some would run on turf and some would run better in the mud and, and some run better on dirt. And, um, everyone has their thing for what, for me being involved in a, in a variety of causes, what, what I think is a important addition 
to to the economic work and for those uh, people who talk about pro-choice issues, which mm-hmm. are an essential part of our, our coalition, is just to create the atmosphere that it's possible. Just just to be able, I've always thought, I, I when, when the Republicans started screaming socialism mm-hmm. 10 years ago, I was thinking, boy, that's like some great, great free advertising. <laughs> I, I, I think that the Republicans screaming socialism have been a, a tremendous boon to uh, the DSA and others, yes, yeah. Yes, I think it's made a hell of a difference. And uh, for me, what I want to do is uh, create the atmosphere, just just that you know you can say those words, just mm-hmm. so that you know if you tend to protest that someone will be there with you. Just that if maybe you want to do something maybe a little more imaginative or creative than traditional conventional political work, there's someone who will receive that and there's a wider audience that will receive that. And maybe in some ways most at core with with this authoritarian government and if it ever does come to a situation where we feel we really need each other, feel we need to be on the streets, feel we need to be present, feel we need to maintain our spaces against mm-hmm. people right in front of us seeking to do us harm, that you know that you have an ally, that you have a friend, that you have someone with you, and uh, that we'll, we'll get through it. I am I'm glad that you said that. There's one thing that I want to tell, and this is a message to all progressives, right? We all come from different areas, different parts. We all have different thought processes. Uh, the one thing that we know is that we are progressives, and progressives mean, being a progressive mean you are willing to, to learn. You're willing to move forward. You're learning to, you are even uh, able to change your mind, mm-hmm. right? Yes. And that is what, that's what it stands for. I mean, and... Uh, what I tell them all the time for folks sometimes who uh, don't necessarily agree with something that I say or in the form that I said or whatever, I always come back and say, in this space, mm-hmm. you know, one, I, as a person, have your back. Right. And I would hope that disagreements or not, that goes for all progressives having each other's back. Because... The only way we are going to be able to move these policies forward, move these ideas forward, is that we do it as a block. Whether we agree 100%, 80%, or whatever, that is what we are going to have to do. And that is sticking together to, to, to for a common cause. And you know what? It, uh, progressive is what? We, we, understand how to, we understand that in this space, it's a thinking space. Mm-hmm. It is a space where you're able to add together, where you're able to think differently, where you're able to put things together and change. That is what we're all we, about. We do have to have each other's backs despite our differences. Absolutely. And, and the intellectual bravery and, and con- conceivably, and, and we may need to have physical bravery going going forward, and we, we need to have each other's backs. Absolutely, and, and, and it goes without question. So, I mean, the thing is, um, w- one of the things I, I always, you know, I always call myself the peacemaker when we have a lot of the, some, in, in, in many domains where we have people at different ends of the spectrum within our same movement fighting is trying to say, hey, we have to create that. I mean, I am not asking, Neil, if you disagree with me, mm-hmm. I'm not asking you to, uh, I mean, I, and you're strong in your position. I'm not asking you to to agree with me, and I, 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 you know, and I am asking you one thing. However, I'm saying if you're so strong in your position, and I am so, you know, iffy about that position, try to convince me. Try to get me there. Maybe you can, maybe you can't, but try to get me there because, you know, I I want to do what's right. There are certain things that are black and white. There are certain things that are gray. Right, and 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 you know what's. I'm struck on our side of the aisle, our broad side of the aisle, um, I'm struck by both our differences and by our agreements, because mm-hmm. our agreements are a little more substantial, I think, sometimes right. than we realize. But I, I, there's nothing, there's, you know, there's nothing, um, there's nothing wishy-washy about a mental fluidity or flexibility that just allows you to evaluate each circumstance and day as it comes. Uh, not every, you know, we we can we can roll with it and still remain steadfast to who we are at, the same, at the same time. Absolutely, and I think that uh, that comes with maturity. I mean, uh, uh, you know, when when the the condescension with which Sorkin spoke about the young yes. people and the coming, condescension is so often within our own coalitions. <laughs> and the condescension <laughs> with which I hear a lot of my my friends. Who sometimes know that I am a uh, 
that I am a Bernie supporter or was a Bernie supporter in the old days and continue to talk about, uh, let's say, these folks aren't being Democrat. I can tell you, I was in the con- I was in the convention center. Mm-hmm. I was with our cohort or Bernie cohort, and I can tell you one thing: uh, if I were to ask policy differences between our entire Democratic uh, group there, both the Bernie and Hillary groups mm-hmm. there, there was not a hell of a lot of folks that they were going to say, "Oh, this is so different." The only different was that. Bernie was a challenger to uh, to uh, Hillary Clinton. And I would say that most in the delegation, including Hillary supporters, were more in sync with Bernie's policies than with Hillary Clinton's well, that, policies. That, that, that is a great point because you, you see some of these divisions within our Democratic Party seem to be, they seem to come from the top. Mm-hmm. And they are, you know, there's a lot of, uh, office holders been along around there for a long time who probably need to be primary right and ocasio cortez you know you can't you know that's not some old grouchy guy from vermont and she may come in and primary some of these folks and you really get the sense that really what is at issue from some of our higher ups who seem to sow some of these divisions is concern about their own status right and their own unwillingness to hire outside of a narrow ideological group and a lot of this seems to be about protecting jobs and resources of an elite within the party than it really is about differences between our rank and file members, whether they were for Hillary or Bernie. That is so true. And, and, and I think we need to turn that on its head. Uh, we are getting close to the end of the show. Uh, folks, I just want to remind you real quick, I want to put my ask on the screen. And that is to say, please remember that this is a... Uh, not only a call-in show, but this is a progressive show that needs your support. So please do remember... Freedom to... isn't free. <laughs> <laughs> please remember to go to patreon.com slash politics done right. That is P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash politics done right. And subscribe to the show. We have a lot that's scheduled for uh, this year. We're going to also have group chats with all videos Zoom using zoom.us. We're going to have a whole lot happening. Check out the 10 points for politics done right that we have set up for 2019. We, ex- we intend on executing every single one. You're, so- you're running a solid shop and I, I respect you. You're you're doing it yourself, and it, it really is up. we got to work collectively, but it really is up to each of us, and you're, and you're doing it. My brother, let me tell you, it's all of us that's doing it. Yeah. I mean, and, yeah. and uh, this is yeah. my part right. that I this, – and, and this is my part where I say we had to have an outlet for all of us. We had to have an outlet for you. We had to have an outlet where all folks can see that, look, it's people that matter. And I ask you to help us keep this going by going to patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com, slash politics done right. And if you don't want to subscribe, which subscribes, subscriptions is, can be as low as a buck a month. You know, Can you get a coffee a month, a dollar a month, or a $2 a month, or whatever you want to do. But if you just want to give a one-time gift, also just go to uh, uh, our politicsunright.com page and go to the PayPal button and go for it. I tell you what. You see that book on the screen, How to Make America Utopia? That's what I'm working on. And uh, all of these things, it's the composite knowledge of all of us, man, as far as what we learn together is what we can actually put out there and make a difference. So I please subscribe to the book. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. So, folks, please go ahead and go to patreon.com slash politics done right or go to politics done right dot com. We are at the closing of the program, and I want to thank Neil Aquino. Neil Aquino, as Pranav just had to say, is one of our uh, great activists here in Houston. He is everywhere. I follow him on his social media and all the things that he's doing to keep, to help be a part. And notice, we always talk about we. We don't talk about I, 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 I. It's always going to be about we because it means we have to do this together. So Neil, give me some clo- a quick closing argument. Well, just just what you've been said, the work the work of freedom is up to us and uh, we we live in these are some real serious matters and in front of us with with a white authoritarian president and a climate disaster, but then there's also the optimism of of moving ahead in a better way, but the people who got us into this are not necessarily going to get us out of it. And so we as people are going to have to take the lead and when we see a politician who comes who gives us some hope we need to support them and we need to, to intellectually 
create the space where our, our values can, can prevail and where we're confident to assert ourselves and where we have each other's back intellectually in terms of work and, if necessary, physically, because these, these are very serious times. Neil Aquino, thank you so kindly for having been Thanks on so Politics Done Right, and we'll do this again. Folks, this is the end of the show, and you know how I ended, and let's do this together. We That's are fun. out. Oh. <laughs> Neil is kind of like, oh, how do we? So let's do it again. We <laughs> are out. <laughs>